Well, good morning, everyone, and we hope everyone had a Merry Christmas this past uh, Wednesday. Uh, it was a wonderful time uh, uh, for our family. I know some, uh, some's out sick today. I know uh, we've been battling different stomach uh, gastro bugs all over the place in our family uh, this week and that. But uh, before we get started, uh, we have uh, two different, two very important uh, things I need to take care of first this morning. And it involves Preston. Preston, come up here, P. And where's Terry? Is Terry here? Come up here, Terry. Today is their birthday today. Terry's 14 and Preston's nine years old. And, uh, and, and out, of all the, out of all my family, there's 11 of us. He said, thank, thank the Lord this morning that Terry and P's the one that have to share the same birthday. They're the only two that could do it and get along with each other. So... But, uh, but these uh, are very important people to me. And Preston, we all know his story. Uh, he's celebrating. His feeds come up on my Facebook. I showed Deanne uh, this morning. She was showing me different years of, of birthdays. Uh, but it was just back in 2013. Uh, so six years ago, we were celebrating on a Sunday his birthday. And we had a wonderful time because uh, 2013 is when Preston went through all his problems and was in his diabetic coma. But we're so thankful the Lord woke him up, brought healing to his life. And today, he is a, he's a whole kid. He's happy kid. And uh, did, you, did you have a good Christmas, Preston? Yes. And are you expecting to have a great birthday today? Yes. Okay, see, birthday kids uh, in December always uh, feel like they get a brunt in, don't they? Because if you're born in December, it's... Uh, uh, Merry Christmas, happy birthday, or happy birthday, Merry Christmas. But not P, he says, it's great. He gets Christmas and birthday. So it's double blessing for Preston. That's what he says. So we got to keep him thinking that way. Amen. Let's all stand together. We're going to open up. I'm going to pray for him today. And then uh, let's just uh, ask the Lord to bless our morning service this morning. Amen. Amen. Father, I thank you today for our family and friends that have gathered around uh, uh, the community to come into Glad Tidings this morning to be in church. Father, I thank you today that your presence is here and you're moving in a mighty way. And Father, I thank you for Terry and Preston. I thank you for my family, that Lord, you've kept your hand on them and you protect them and you bless them. And Lord, I thank you for the miracles that you perform in our lives. And so Father, today I just pray that as we praise you here together this morning, that, Lord, that your presence will come and move in this place. We thank you, Father, that uh, you've given us a blessed Christmas celebrating you, Jesus. And now, Lord, as we look into the new year, we just believe, God, that uh, we're going to see great things and greater things happening as we push through these last few days of 2019, going into wonderful 2020. And we thank you for all that you're doing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, let's shake hands, greet one another this morning. So good to have everybody here in Let's worship the Lord together today. There's a happy land of prophets over in the great beyond.
that's your goodness. Hallelujah. I think this next song, Great Things, is a great song for us to consider, thinking of all the good things the Lord's brought us through and how he, when we celebrated, he was there with us. And when we had hard times, he was there with us. Amen. He's a great God. He does great things. He'll never leave us or forsake us. Amen. Come let us worship our King.
Lord, you're welcome here. Lord, and in 2020, Lord, we want to be closer to you, to know you more, to go deeper in your presence. Oh, we can't get far enough into you, Lord. We just need to be overcome by your presence, Lord. And so our prayer for 2020 is more of you, Lord. More of you, Lord. We hunger for you more to be closer to you, Jesus. Make this your prayer, your song for 2020, that we want more of him. Thank you, Jesus.
faith to receive this morning, God's going to do the miraculous. Amen. Would you lift your hands with me and let's just believe that this morning? Father, I thank you that, Lord, as we gathered into this place today, Lord, our faith is rising. Lord, as we sing and praise you today, it rises up in us. A level of faith rises higher. Lord, as we're gathered together and we're praying with believers today, Lord, our faith is rising up, rising higher. And Lord, as we agree together in this place, we know, Father, your word. As we pray, believe that we shall receive and it shall be, Lord. And I thank you today that on earth it is as it is in heaven. I thank you for your presence moving in this place. Thank you for salvations and thank you for healing. Lord, those that are sick, I believe healing in the name of Jesus this morning. Father, I pray, Father, for a supernatural touch of heaven to reach down and touch them today. Lord, for our lost loved ones, we believe for the conviction power of the Holy Ghost to touch them and to stir them. God, I believe this morning that our faith is rising, God, and we're going to see miracles miracles and breakthroughs continued father signs and wonders in the name of jesus and father i thank you thank you for doing great things thank you for moving in great ways thank you for being here with us this morning thank you for stirring hearts in this place today in jesus name we pray and everybody says a great big amen amen we'll give the lord a good hand clap as you're seated this morning hey praised. Amen. Amen. You may be seated this morning. Hallelujah. Lord is great, greatly to be praised in the city of God, in the tabernacle of his uh, sanctuary. We're praising him today. And as we praise him this morning, uh, we're going to go to the gather and tithe and offering. And as we receive our tithe and offering this morning, I have our ushers gathered together. And uh, as we receive that today, uh, I just want to thank you for your continued giving. As we reach the end of one year, going into another year, our church has been around 83 years, going in 84 years. Uh, only because of continued faithfulness of the people of God in Flint to continue the mission. And so we have a great mission field here that we're uh, serving in our city. We have, in, uh, we have foreign missions that we're doing, and we're going to talk about all that today. Uh, as part of our part of our mess, my message here, and uh, we're going to do some different things than what you're normally used to on a normal Sunday morning because we've got some great things that uh, we're talking about today, and I'm glad you're here to be part of it. But as you sow today and give. Uh, this this funding goes to continue the work of the Lord around our church, our city, and uh, and our mission. And so let's uh, pray and ask God to bless it. And we're going to ask the Lord to bless you because as he's been faithful to give you uh, finance uh, because of your work, your time, your talent, your ability, as you return that portion unto the Lord, that which belongs to him, we're going to pray the Lord blesses you and multiplies it back to you. Amen. So let's pray together today. Father, I'm so thankful. Lord, I'm grateful, Father, for the faithful people that, Father, call glad tidings their home, that, Lord, give and tithe and offering uh, to this church, Father, to sustain this ministry and, uh, Father, to reach people around the world. Thank you, Lord, that people in India are being touched. The church, Father, is on mission there, a children's home, as children being blessed by this church. Thank you, Father, for the people in Guatemala that's being reached by a Bible training center that's there because of, Father, the generosity and the faithfulness of this church. God, I thank you for the tithe and offering that support this church that, Father, we can continue to sustain, to preach this message here in our city and to touch around this community, Father, with the power of Jesus Christ. And Lord, as we receive this offering today, I just believe, Father, that you're going to work in these hearts and lives of people that are so generous in sowing their gifts today. And Father, we pray a blessing upon them in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's sing together as you receive. I give you glory, glory.
That's exactly what we were created to do, is to worship our Lord. And when we worship our Lord, it gives him all the glory. So you guys may be seated just for a moment. I'm going to uh, give out some uh, announcements uh, that are things that are coming up. Uh, our first one is tonight uh, at 6 p.m. We have our fifth Sunday singing. So if you're interested in uh, uh, doing a, uh, singing a song or a scripture or anything like that, uh, get with Sister Carol and let her know so we can get you guys on the lineup tonight for that. Um, on December 31st, it is New Year's Eve, and we are having our annual New Year's Eve party uh, hosted by G GT Youth. And so that starts at 8 p.m. We would love to see everyone here. And as we uh, celebrate the new year, we will have a uh, we'll have pizza and games and all kinds of things in the gym. And then we will meet here at 11 p.m. where our uh, youth will uh, lead us in worship, and we'll have a service to bring in the new year 2020 and uh, celebrate a new year and all the promises and the things that God's going to do for us in the year 2020. Uh, the, the following day, New Year's Day, uh, we will not have any services, so there won't be any youth, won't be kids or any adults uh, on that particular day. But on Thursday, January 2nd, uh, the Senior Saints will meet at 6 p.m. Uh, in the gym for their uh, monthly dinner, and so that will be at 6 p.m., and so for those of you who are a part of that, you don't want to miss that. And then one last thing is, is when we are done uh, with services uh, today, uh, myself, Pastor Danae, and Audrey, we will be in the uh, foyer area. And for those of you who don't know, we have the GT community Focus events that are coming up. Uh, these are things that we're going to do on the 20th every month in the year 2020. And these are going to be events and outreaches that we're going to be doing together as a fellowship. And so if you would like to be a part of that and receive uh, text messages and reminders throughout the year, we would like to have uh, your phone number so that we can keep everyone in the loop and keep us all connected. So when these things come about that uh, you're all here to participate because we can't do this by ourselves. We have to do it as one body in order to see the growth and the things that God has for us. So at the end of the service, if you'd like to be a part of the uh, GT Community Focus Group, uh, meet us back there. Let us have your number, and we'll get you plugged in. All right. Thank you, Pastor Anthony. Let's give Pastor Anthony a good hand together today. You know, Pastor Anthony, Pastor Danae, they're out here with us today because we've got a special, uh, a special message that we're going to share. And uh, Pastor Danae filled in uh, for us on the piano this morning. And Stephanie is sailing the wide open seas on a vacation. So uh, we hope she's having a good time. Uh, but uh, we miss her. But uh, thank you to Pastor Danae for filling in today. And we also have uh, uh, the GT kids out here today because then since they come out to fill in for worship time, I told them we're just going to do some type of a little back and forth tag team message this morning. And I think you're going to enjoy it because it's something that's going to touch us and relate to us. And so this week and next week, I'm going to be talking about uh, the end of 2019, the year of 2020, our vision that we have here in our church. Tuesday night, the youth are going to be uh, doing the big, the big program uh, for New Year's Eve. And I told Pastor Anthony, when the clock strikes midnight, we're going to be praying in that. But uh, we're going to break the shofars out and we're going to be blowing shofars and we're going to be uh, just uh, celebrating the end of one decade, the entrance into another decade, and uh, the promise and the provision that God has in store for us. Because uh, 20 is a significant number in Bible numerology. It's uh, uh, 20 represents a, a word, uh, the Jewish, uh, in the Jewish uh, alphabet, they've uh, come to a part where, where you start talking about numbers, they assign uh, names and letters to it. And the number 20 is a Hebrew word uh, for kalaf that talks about open palms. It talks about open palms and open hands. And so in the year 2020, we're going to celebrate the goodness of God's open hand and redemptive delivering strength and power in our life. And, and part of it is uh, coming to Habakkuk chapter 2. I'm going to read that in just a moment. But on Wednesdays in January and February, uh, I've got this book that we're going to base our Wednesday night Bible uh, study on. And it's a wonderful book by Kerry Newoff. It's about seven challenges that nobody expects, but everybody faces. And we're going to talk about cynicism, and we're going to talk about pride, and we're going to talk about uh, disconnection. We're going to talk about being irrelevant. Uh, we're going to talk about emptiness, things that happen in everybody's life 
uh, that nobody expects is going to happen to you, uh, but it happens to all of us. And how do we overcome it? So the Bible study is going to talk about not only what we experience, but then we're also going to share about how do we overcome those things in our life. How do we overcome when, when, we, when we thought that everything, may all your dreams come true. I took Audrey uh, on her birthday. Her birthday's in February. And when we lived in Florida, we took her to Disney World on her birthday. And she wore an electric light-up dress. And uh, people were walking by. And she, she was saying the at that day, everybody was saying, may all your dreams come true this Valentine's Day. We took her on Valentine's Day. It's the 15th, though. And so she started walking around, waving her hand, saying, may all your dreams come true this Valentine's Day. And people are like, uh, they've got child labor at Disney World, you know. And, uh, and so uh, we, we think we're raised to the understanding that well, all our dreams come true, but sometimes all our dreams don't necessarily come true. But we have to understand the kingdom of God is still coming anyway. And so we have to, we have to work through those times. And so I'm going to try to, to talk about that on Wednesday night. So maybe you haven't done a Wednesday night Bible study in a while. It's time to maybe start something new in the new year. I think you will like it. And, uh, and so we've got all kinds of things going on on Wednesdays. But but today, uh, I want to talk to you, and I'm going to talk from the book of Habakkuk and then the book of Isaiah, and we're going to talk about these. This is from the Amplified Version, so if you're able, you can stand with me, and the Lord is talking to us about as we end one year and go into a new year, as we end one decade and go into a new decade, as we end 20 years, because 20 years ago, we were standing on the precipice of going into Y2K. You remember Y2K? Everybody was worried about that uh, the computers were going to crash and stock up on the powdered milk and the powdered, uh, uh, all this powder stuff that we can live in uh, bomb shelters because we didn't know exactly what was going to happen when Y2K. We're going to be 20 years past that here next uh, Tuesday. And as we come up to Tuesday night, we're going to celebrate God's continued goodness in our life. And looking around, it didn't look like Y2K affected many of us very long, at least, you know. So we're all doing really well here this morning, it appears. And so as we gather in to a new year, uh, a new decade, there's going to be new challenges that come our way. But this is what God reminds us. He reminded the children of Israel. They were going through a time of, they were going through a time of captivity. And the prophet talks to God and the prophet says, God, why are you letting the Chaldeans, why are you letting the Babylonians, why are you letting the captivity come our way? And uh, he reminds him that the just are going to live through faith through the challenges and then he tells the prophet this. He says, this is what the prophet says. He goes, oh, I know I've been rash to talk out plainly this way to God. Has anybody ever just rashly talked out plainly to God? And then you realize oh, the Lord is the king of the universe, the creator of all, all there is, and the way we talk to him. We have to realize that he goes, oh, how sometimes we're rash to talk to God that way. But he says, I will in, th in my thinking stand upon the post of observation and station myself in a tower of fortress and watch and see what what will say within me and what answer I will make as his mouthpiece to the perplexities of my complaint against him. His complaint is why God are you letting people who are worse off than us overtake us? And it seems like nothing. Else. And this is what the Lord goes further and says this. He says, and the Lord answered me and said, I'm thankful that even in our complaint against God, he still gives an answer to the prophet and he gives an answer to us today. And he says, Write the vision, engrave it so plainly upon tablets that everyone who passes may be able to read it easily and quickly as they hasten by. He says it's going to tarry in verse 3. I don't have that up there, but he says, uh, tarry for it. Wait for it. It will come to pass. It's going to. You have to wait for it today. And so as we, as we receive the word and wait for the Lord to uh, perform that which he's promised, he reminds us that we need to make it plain so everybody that reads it, that hears it, that sees it, is able to understand uh, what is the vision that the Lord has promised to us. So let's pray about that today, and then we're going to talk more. Father, I thank you today 
for, your, for the vision that you've given to the kingdom of God, to advance your kingdom, to allow us to be able to work in such a way, God, that you're moving and ministering, that, God, you're advancing and moving in our spirit through us, that, God, we're going to see a great 2020 come and into the future. And so, Lord, today, as we receive this word, I pray we have open hearts, open minds. God, give us ears to hear what you're saying to us, I pray. And, Lord, bless our time in your house today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You may be seated today. So 2020 marks this. Uh, 2020 marks that the Lord is giving us a vision and he's wanting us to write it plainly. It, what the Lord has spoken in the Old Testament, he, you, he will look at the Old Testament and the principles and the, and the way that the Lord speaks in Acts. We can see how uh, we, can, we can utilize it in the New Testament and in our future and in our now. And so the Lord says, write this, write this vision, make it plain that everybody that goes by and reads it will be able to run with it easily and quickly who goes by. And so the Lord's giving us an, a vision for us to share with you, easy and quick that you can see it and can read it so that you know that as you pass by, the Lord is working. His promises are yes and amen. We have years of history of God speaking in the prophetic in this church, and we're seeing a fruition and a working of God's manifestation power that comes along, and it comes in. Uh, to some, it looks like it comes in bits and pieces. Some, it looks like, wow, the Lord's doing so much, and to others, it seems like there's big sparse places, but today what the hope is, is to remind you that what the Lord is sharing, he is performing. And as he's performing, here's a vision from us that the Lord has given to us that we're writing, we're making plain. So as we share it, you take it and you run with it. In the year 2020, uh, this word is marked by God saying, I have open palms over you today. Open palms, redemptive and delivering power of Jesus is going to be celebrated in 2020. Isaiah 49, 16 says this, See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands, and your walls are ever before me. Now, I want you to think about this. In the year 2020, as we think about God's having open hands over us, open hands are hands, gestures, that means he's giving, he's he's. He's doing something for you. He's blessing you. He's placing his hand before you. It's an open invitation uh, for you to come and receive. It's opening up of yourself to receive. And so in 2020, think about what God says he's doing for us. He's engraved you on the palm of his hand and your walls are ever before him. So as we go into this new year and we think about what has happened in this year, I want you to consider that every day, that the Lord has you engraved in his hands and that your walls are ever before him. And what, let me just share briefly what this means with you before uh, I call Pastor Danae, Pastor Anthony up to talk a little bit. But this is what this means. I want you to consider what this means. Open palms are before you. Your walls are ever before you. God has, you, he has such a thought of you. He has such a care for you. He says, my hands are open to you and you are engraved. You are imprinted. You are here written on my hands. I'm always thinking about you. This is what God's telling us today. You're always on his mind. Even when you don't think you're on his mind. When you think God's a million miles away from you, he says, you're right here inscribed on my hand. And then he says, your walls are ever before me. Think about it this way. This is talking about an architectural type of scripture here. And so it means when you are building a house or when you're constructing something, uh, well, I don't know. You know, sometimes we go at it, we go at it, uh, uh, we go at it with just saying, give me some wood, some nails, and let's just make something happen, right? That's how we do it sometimes. But the correct way is that you get some drawings and you get some prints made up and you get some blueprints drawn and you get a plan laid out. And what happens is when you get so wrapped up in your building, when you get so wrapped up in your making, when you get so wrapped up in your doing, 
it becomes who you are. It becomes part of you. You're, you're like, let me look at those drawings. Look at where this bathroom is. I'm, I'm going to build a bigger house and I'm going to put a second bathroom in it. Uh, and I'm going to put a walk-in closet in the master bedroom. And I'm going to take some space out of the kids' room so I can make my room bigger. You know, I mean, whatever you do with your drawings, this is what it becomes you. When this church is made, they have sets of drawings that were made so they could outline where the f- lo- lobby is, the foyer, where the sanctuary sits, how it grades slopes. And, and you can imagine that they're looking at these plans. They're saying, this is how this is being laid out when your home is built. This is how it's being laid out. We're looking forward into next year, see, constructing outdoor pavilion and different things. And there's going to be people that are going to come. They're going to see these things happen. And, and as we begin to do these things, uh, uh, they're going to uh, they're going to hopefully uh, not just uh, go at it with hammer and nail without a plan but we talk to them and we tell them this is what we're wanting and this is what we need and uh, and so there's planning there's effort that goes into p- building the finished project and this verse is talking your walls are ever before me so there's a blueprint your name so inscribed on God's hands and the blueprints ever before him that he's always looking at you, your life, your timeline, your history, everything who you were and everything God has planned for you is right here rolled out in his hands and he cares about you that much that he says that, uh, he says that he's going to see that your footsteps are ordered of the Lord. Does anybody believe that this morning? The righteous footsteps are ordered. It's ordered because he's got a plan. And his love for you is rolled up in a print right there on his hand. Consider how big his hands are. He's got the whole world in his hand. That's a nursery song that we sing. He's got the whole world in his hand, but he has your name in his hand. That's the love that God has for you. And it's a love he had for Israel. Isaiah is talking to the nation of Israel. He loves that nation of Israel. He loves the people of Israel. For the church today, we are the bride of Christ. We are the children of God. We are the joint heirs to the throne. And guess what, church? We are so inscribed in his hands today, his love for you is never ending. And there's not anything that can happen to you that he doesn't already know about. Because it's in his plans. Your walls are ever before him. And so sometimes though, sometimes there's hiccups along the way, isn't there? And so sometimes I think, well, you know, I got a plan, but sometimes I make a mistake or I mess up. I go back to the verse where I say, I'm thankful today, God, that you've got a perfect will for me, but that I know that you've got a good and acceptable and a perfect will of God. So even in my mistake and even where I mess up, I'm thankful today that even as we get ready to go into 2020, the Lord tells you that his, your walls are ever before me. He's got you engraved in his hand today. And so even when I mess up, it doesn't mess him up. I'm the clay on his potter wheel today. And so when it's marred in his hand, if you can consider that this morning, your, your life may take a U-turn. Your, your life may take a detour that you weren't planning on. There might be something that came your way. And you said, Lord, there's just nothing I guess I can ever do about it. But the Lord says, don't you know that when you're on his potter wheel, when you're clay in the master's hands, when your plans are in the hands of the Lord's, whose hands are bigger than anybody's hands I can ever talk to you about, his hands bigger than your hand this morning. And when your life is in his hand today, then what happens? You've got an open invitation to come to the Lord and say, Lord, I know I've marred. I know I've messed up. I know I've made a mistake, but Lord, I know I'm in your hand. And because I'm in your hand, you make a way where there seems to be no way. So even though I find myself in the jungle, God, you cut a path right through it. And Lord, even though I find myself in a desert and I need a drink and I'm thirsty, God, you put an oasis of water right there for me because you got the plans in your hands and all you have to do is speak and it is so. Amen. Hey, let's give the Lord praise. You believe it. We're going to go with our faith level raised this year. God's doing something. Amen. And so I want to take a moment and I'm going to have Pastor Danae and Anthony come up here. Pastor Anthony, Pastor Danae. We've got some great things that they're going to talk to you about. 2019 at Glad Tidings has been marked in monumental ways for us. We have seen God do many things in our life. We have seen him keep families. We have seen him protect our families. We've seen him do mighty things. We see growth coming into our kids and youth. We see 
God moving in their ways. We see souls being touched. We see people being filled with the Holy Spirit. We see all these great things that God's doing. And so I told Pastor Danae, Pastor Anthony yesterday, I said, this is what we're going to do. We're tag teaming this day. So I'm going to give a little introduction to this 2020. I'm going to have them share. I'm going to come back and share. And then next week too, going Tuesday night, they're going to share. Next Sunday, we're going to share more. Because you know what 2020 also does? I'm going to give you a little bit of insight here. 2020, 20 in the Hebrew It tells you something else. Not only is it open hands over you, it's redemption. It's, it's a, it is a, um, it is a blessing to you, but it also marks an end for waiting. And so in the Bible, there are, there are 20 years that Solomon waited for the, uh, for the temple to be completed. The Ark of the Covenant waited 20 years in Kareth, Jerem before it was received. Israel waited 20 years to be freed from Jabin's oppression. Uh, there, was, uh, there was the outer wall of the court of Moses' tabernacle, and there was 20 pillars around. 20 marks and end to a wait. And so next week as we gather together, we're going to talk about how the Old Testament talks to us and the New Testament shares with us about how our life, that what we've been waiting for, that wait ends in 2020 and we're believing that what we've been waiting for is going to come to a fruition because it marks an end to waiting and a yes to walking in. Amen. But it goes like this. This goes like this. If you're prophesied over, and I try to tell this last night to my own children, and you know, uh, Ben, you know how uh, we get around and they get rambunctious, and I'm like, Preston, Preston, let me tell you something. You want to be a great piano player. You want to be a mighty warrior. You want to be the best something you can be. We can have prophecy prophesied over us. We can have words given to us. We can, we can be motivated to the extreme. But you will never become a great piano player until there's practice. You will never be moving towards being that great video gamer he wants to be, right? Unless there's commitment and there's practice to doing it. You never just start out being able to be the top surgeon at any local hospital. It just doesn't happen. It takes persistence. It takes working towards a direction. And so there's prophecy that's being filled. That's why we're not saved by works, but James tells us that our works show people our faith. And so we're going to work together going in that direction where the Lord has promised us that victories and breakthroughs are coming. And you know what I'm so thankful for? I'm thankful that we are in a position in this church through being debt-free, from being in a position that we don't have outstanding payment so much that it hinders us from being able to have a youth and a kids pastor. But it enables us to go in the direction that the Lord's prophesying for us about. There's a lot of people that hear the prophecies that great things are going to come, but they never take a step of faith towards that direction. But when we take a step of faith towards the direction Step by step, accomplishments begin happening in our lives. And we're seeing that happen in our life. And so this is the year, a year's come and gone that the Pastor Anthony, Pastor Danae has been with us. And I'm going to have them share with you this morning what's happening in kids and youth ministry. Amen. Go ahead. Yes. There are so many things that we could talk about, hundreds of things that the Lord has done literally in youth and in kids. Pastor Brian told us to talk about five each, so he thought you might want to eat lunch today, but but we're going to uh, hit some highlights, and the first one that we want to talk about that the youth has done this year is they've done outreach, and those of you that know about Carriage Town, the teenagers have got to go there and serve, and um, the, the things that they talk about amongst each other about how it's changed perspective of different things on their life is great. Um, one of the other things that they got to do this year, which was really awesome is um, they did uh, kids 
family camp. And so uh, lots of kids just crying and pouring out and saying they want the Holy Ghost and they want those things was an effort of GT youth spending lots and lots and lots of effort preparing for that week and, and, and pouring into their lives. And so that was another really cool thing. There's many times, many different things that we've gotten to do this past year to reach out into the community. And I'm really proud of the maturity level that they've taken on to, to be able to do that. And we've seen um, lots of really great results because of it. So that's one thing is outreach that uh, the second one is, is that we did summer squads this year, and so many of you saw us traipsing around the parking lot in the fields, uh, muddy and covered in paint and all those things. But you know, the wonderful thing about doing summer squads is that it opened the door for our youth to receive uh, a couple more youth in as well, and we were able to grow that way. And we did various competitions. Uh, one of them even took us to going uh, door to door to all of our neighbors around here and introducing ourselves and letting, us, letting them know that uh, we're here. And uh, that drew some interest in our direction as well. And uh, we had a very successful uh, summer squads uh, time, and uh, I believe our youth had a, had a really great time doing it. And good results from it. Another thing, if you can uh, go to the next slide that we have this year, we started was an internship that we did in the summer. Um, we had four that were full time, and then uh, several others that helped out uh, a couple of times, but um, they came three times a week um, and learned different abilities, uh, doing phone calls. Many of you received phone calls. Uh, they were learning how to do those kinds of things. They were learning how to prepare lessons and worship sets and, and doing a lot of uh, a lot of stuff. They, they said it was fun, but I think about halfway through it, they realized how much commitment and work it was, but I'm proud of them for sticking it out and uh, really doing it. It was, a, it was a neat time for us to see um, the growth and change in them Another thing that we did is we went out and was inviting people to come to Summer Blast and to youth group and to church. And at the beginning, it was a, a couple of them real shy and a quick, a quick high and come to our church. And by the end of it, they could carry on conversations about the Lord and their church to strangers. And so it was a lot of, a lot of growth in that time. One of my favorite things that we did with the youth this summer, um, just seeing the, the change in their life because of the internship and then the benefits that we received, um, which we'll talk about later on, because of, of their hard work. So that was really cool, too. And the next one, this is one of my favorites, is that because of uh, the things that we have seen this year, we were able to form a, a, a youth uh, worship team this year. And uh, it's been a, a great honor to see our, our youth really uh, begin to develop their skills in playing the piano, playing the drums, uh, playing guitar, uh, singing. Uh, a lot of them have just really, really blossomed. Some of them didn't even realize that they had the ability to even do those things, but we challenged them to do it, and they're doing it. Um, so they sing every Wednesday night. They have a practice an hour before service, and they lead our worship uh, on Wednesday nights. It's fully youth-led, and then uh, we were able to perform Perform here uh, just a few weeks ago. Uh, many of you were here and got to see uh, our youth do that, and they'll be doing it again uh, on Tuesday night at 11 o'clock. So uh, they're really good, and the spirit really does go through them when they're when they're singing. So you don't want to miss that. Yes, super proud of them for that. Really cool. The other thing that we want to say we're super proud of is growth and uh, both kinds of growth. We have grown in numbers um, thanks to all kinds of different things. Um, the Lord has really blessed us um, with growing in numbers. One of the things that we've always done is we put out more chairs than necessary and then we believe that they get filled up. And uh, one one night the, the teenagers were saying, we hate that there's rows over here and there's rows over here. We should just fill in the middle. And uh, Pastor Anthony said, I'm going to quit putting out extra chairs and this is what we're going to do. When you fill up every one of those chairs, then I will fill up all the chairs in the middle for you to fill more people up. And so the other night, uh, well, it's been a couple months that he had to add the chairs in the middle. So that was cool for them to get to see. But the other night we only had one empty chair and that was for me to sit in while he was talking. So every chair um, that he had set out, including all the added ones in the middle, were all full. And so it was just a neat thing to see the Lord growing and doing the things that he has promised. Another thing that I want to tell you is really cool is one of the girls for months and months and months had been asking every night for us to pray for this girl in her school. And so every, every night the teenagers would gather around her. We would pray for this girl. Um, and about five weeks ago she came and she's not missed a Wednesday since she came. So it, it, that's, that's what it's about. It's growth. 
Also, we had kids filled with the Holy Ghost this year, teenagers filled with the Holy Ghost. We had teenagers dance that have never danced in the spirit before. We've had a lot of growth numbers, but we've also had a lot of growth spiritually, and that is what it's all about. So I'm so thankful to all of you for investing and pouring in to our youth group so that we could be able to do the things that we've done this year only by God's grace. Many more things than what we mentioned, but it's only by God's grace and you guys investing in them that has made this be able to to happen. So we're super, super thankful to all of you. And then we have some things that we're going to share about the kids' ministry. And then and this year we had many, many special events, both on the children's ministry and youth side. Uh, one of those is that we started uh, kickball seasons. Um, those were, took place in November, and that turned out of a lot of events. Uh, this past one we did um, actually surpassed the one we did last year, and we had a lot of families that came and watched the games, and uh, that brought in a lot of attention in our direction as well. Also, uh, Easter egg hunts. Um, last year was, it was an interesting year with the muddy field, but, uh, you know, but it didn't stop the kids. You know, we had 10,000 eggs out there. We had uh, the news crew was out here filming us and watching everything. And so that was uh, a good exposure for our church as well. Uh, we also uh, have been involved in uh, plays and uh, community parades. And uh, we've also been involved in um, uh, many, many uh, activities across uh, our, our, our community and uh, it's been really good, a great exposure for our church, and uh, as you can see, we continue to keep growing. Yes, yes, lots of things. One of the things that I do enjoy is lunch with the pastor. So each week in uh, GT Kids, they we they all get tickets, and we draw a number, and we go to the school, and we get to eat lunch with one of the, uh, they're not all on there. Obviously, we'd have to make their heads this small <laughs> for you to fit them, but um, we get to go there. So it's really neat, one, to get to talk to them on a personal level because there's not distraction of other kids, but then we also get to talk to the kids in their class and the people that they're eating with and the people at their table and their school. So it's been really a neat thing. It's something I really enjoy and getting to know them and and what they want to do and what they want to be and the things that they feel. um, It's been a really great thing. So that's uh, every Sunday we draw. And then during that week, if it's a boy, Pastor Anthony goes, or if it's a girl, I go and we get to eat lunch with them and bring them whatever they choose, McDonald's or Taco Bell or whatever it might be. So we go and and get to do that. And it's been a really uh, awesome experience that I enjoy. I know Pastor Anthony does. And the kids definitely do. They fight over who's going to, who's going to be that week's winner. So that's a really uh, a neat thing that uh, we enjoy. And then this past year, we did great in talent expo and Bible quizzing. Uh, both our GT youth and GT kids, our GT kids uh, placed in states and therefore in a Bible quizzing, and therefore we were able to go uh, to the national level in Texas. And also, even in our dance category for our uh, GT kids, they also placed uh, with states and then went to nationals. And I believe they came in what? First place, second place for? Something. The, First place, I believe, in the nation for that dance uh, category. And so that was great exposure for our our state and for our church as well. And so uh, we had kids that won in in, uh, categories for dancing, for singing, for uh, art. Uh, We we presented it up here. This whole thing was loaded in trophies and uh, the medallions and all kinds of things. It was a great year uh, for us in that area. And our kids and our youth both did very well. Uh, with that. The other things that we do at GT Kids, two big events this year was Summer Blast, which was so awesome to see all of these pews right here full of children who were just worshiping the Lord and praying for the Lord to move in their lives and lots of kids getting saved. And we had lots of kids show up to Summer Blast that were not from uh, Glad Tidings. So that was really neat to see um, tons of different, all kinds of ages. And um, it was really neat to, to have those three days. And then, of course, that after party, they all have a lot of fun with that. That was a huge effort, not just am I so thankful for all of the kids and all of the interns who spent their summer working for that, but all of the volunteers that came we had almost 30 volunteers um, that helped put Summer Blast together, which was so amazing. Uh, really cool time. And then we did the Kids Encounter in the fall, which is during our um, Ron Phillips revival. We had a kids revival in the back, and uh, the kids really memorized those verses, and they really had a good time um, in our construction theme that we did um, for that. So those were two big events where the, that we got to pour into the kids and day after day, so it became a, a routine for them coming to church um, one day after another and really building upon that. And also at Summer Blast, 
um, thanks to one wonderful person, we were able to match and tie and both get soaked with water um, as we were able to give to the mission. So that was a really neat thing. Uh, not the water, but the, the giving to the missions uh, was a really great thing. So those were two other awesome events that happened in 2019. And also with our GT kids, we were able to do uh, community missions. And one of those things that we do is that we've gone out to uh, schools this year and have participated in uh, Thanksgiving parties, Christmas parties, and uh, various things like that. And uh, it gave us a great time to get to interact with other kids in our community and give us a little bit of exposure and to really present um, what Christ's love is like. And some of the responses we've gotten from those have really been overwhelming, have been touching to us as people can't believe that a church would even get involved in that. You know, they can't believe the, the kindness and the generosity and love that we show toward these kids and the teachers and the schools. And that's been very rewarding for us to, to see that. And it's great exposure uh, for our for our church because it shows that we are demonstrating the love of Christ to them and it shows what we as a church are truly designed to do and so that's been a, a really good uh, a really good point for us this year as well yes. 2019 has been an awesome year so if we could just for a moment just give the Lord some praise for all of those things and the things we didn't picture he's so good he's so good and uh as wonderful as all of those things are, and as fabulous as it is, and when we think about it, it, it can make me a little bit emotional. I'm trying super hard not to cry this morning. <laughs> but um, I know that the promises that the Lord has for 2020 are are even better, and they're even greater. And we can't always look back and say, we did really good that year. We did a lot of things for the Lord that year. That's wonderful, but it's still in the past. Even the things we just did at Christmas time, they're still in the past. And so we have to keep going forward into those things. So Pastor Anthony is going to share a little bit about 2020, and then I will, and then we'll turn it back over to uh, Pastor Brian. One of my things about 2020 is that we want to continue to go forward. Many times when we see things in the past that have gone, that have gone well, we continue to try and keep pulling from that. It's kind of like in the, old, in the Old Testament, they would dig a well out in the desert and they would find water and then they would keep, keep going after the same well and eventually it would dry out. The wisdom would be to go dig a new well so you can get sustenance there. And that's kind of what our vision for 2020 is that we're going to go dig new wells that way we can continue to keep the punishing coming forward and continue to keep the waters flowing. You know, it's easy to judge a group or a church or a ministry based upon its numbers. And though growing is our intent in 2020, I focus more on the spiritual aspect of it because I want to see our teenagers and our kids grow spiritually. I want them to see that walking and the fulfillment of the Spirit and signs, wonders, and miracles, and laying on of hands and those things not just be a story that they hear from their grandparents, but that, that it be a reality and a day-to-day -day thing for them. So that's where we're going forward in 2020. Yes, will we grow? Absolutely. Just in youth alone, we're going to get six new kids just this coming fall coming out of GT Kids. Our, some of the kids I'm talking to now, their families are interested in coming to our church. Those families have more teens and kids as well. So growth is on the horizon for us. Our numbers will continue to increase. But however, for me, it's more than a number. It's more than what is on a sheet of paper. I want to see a core group of kids really get the gospel and go forward and uphold a standard that people around them can follow. And so that is our vision going forward in 2020. And we're digging new wells. And we're going to keep going forward. Amen. I really encourage all of you, if you're able to come out Tuesday night to, to do so. I have a lot of things that I want to share that the Lord has spoken to me years ago before I even moved to Michigan about the year 2020 and personal things. But um, I know it's going to be neat and you get to see the teenagers do all of their stuff. It's going to be a really nice uh, time going into the year. But one thing that I want to say to all of you since we're here today, I want to take an opportunity to say, is to please pray in agreement. You know, it's always good, and I appreciate all of you that pray for the kids and you pray for the youth, but in 2020, there's some specific things that I'm asking you to please pray for. And one is for every one of them to receive the Holy Ghost. And that's one thing that the Lord told me when um, we switched from being associate pastors to working in kids ministry is that there is no junior Holy Ghost. And so we want every one of these kids from the ones that are four and five years old to the ones that are about to be seniors in high school, every one of them 
before they leave, 2020 ends is for them to have an encounter of the Holy Ghost. So pray for that. Pray and ask the Lord. It's good to pray for them, but that's one specific thing is to pray for them to receive that power, that they will have that power at a young age, that they will walk their whole life following after Jesus with that power on the inside of them. And the second thing I'm going to ask for you to pray uh, for is 2020. We're asking the Lord to send 20 new faces to GT kids and 20 new faces to GT youth uh, in the course of the year 2020. So that the Lord will bring 20 new kids to, for us to see and touch and love on and 20 new teenagers that we will get to invest in their lives. So be praying for those things. It's it's uh, There's a lot more, but um, because of time, we're just going to tell you that the Lord has a plan. And so if you will pray and agree together, I know that the promises that the Lord keeps repetitively giving to us, they're coming to pass. And this year, our eyes are not going to be able to, to even begin to see or our brains are not going to be able to know. Our ears aren't going to be able to hear. There's going to be so much better than what we're talking about even now, what we're expecting, what we're believing for. I think that it's going to be even greater than that. It's going to be even better than that. So we're going into 2020 believing for big, big things. God is up to something big, and I believe if we're obedient and we pray and seek his face, he's going to open up the windows of heaven, and we're going to just have tons of blessings upon uh, glad tidings in our youth department. Hey, we believe it together today. Amen. There are so many different ministries. This is youth and children's, but there are so many more ministries that encompass this whole church. Uh, but we're believing God to do great things in this whole church this coming year. And But a focus, uh, because of the prophetic that we receive in this church, I wanted to share those with you so that you would see what God's doing uh, in the youth and the children's ministry uh, here at Glad Tidings. But I want you to just take a moment because what's on my heart is what uh, we have a, a GT core values. And the core values is something I have on our website because these are things that we live by, I live by. I want you to put them in your heart and live by. And I want you to say in this coming year, we're gonna see God, we're gonna work this way, we're gonna see God do these different things in our life and we're gonna put God first this way. So watch, our first core value that we live by in 2020 is we're gonna say we are a word-based group of believers. You know, there are many people that do many things to try to draw crowds. I mean, sport, fo football fields are filled with people coming to be a spectator. But church isn't just for a performance. Church is a participatory uh, event that we gather together around, and it's centered around the Word of God. It's the Word of God that changes lives. It's the Word of God that touches heart. And the Word of God is an infallible Word, and it is the Word that was given to us, and Timothy tells us, by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, and it's good for our teaching, our instruction, our reproof, our correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto all good work. And so together today, uh, we put it in our spirit that we are a word-based group of believers that are going forth this year in 2020 saying our central focus, everything we do is what does the Bible say about it? What does the Bible have to talk to us about it? What's the biblical principle that we live by? We are a word-based group of believers. Our second core value that we are going to live by and that, we, uh, that I live by, we strive in our life to be this way, is one, we are Christ-centered fellowship. We are biblically focused. And second, Christ is the center. He's just like what the prayer of St. Patrick was. He's before me, behind me, beside me, all the way around me, God above me, God below me, Christ-centered. So when people see you, they don't see you, but they see Christ in you. And that's what Romans tells us, that he says, I beseech you, brethren, that you become a living sacrifice unto God, which is your reasonable service, that you may prove that which is good, acceptable, perfect will of God. So we put Christ center in our life. The third uh, core value is that we are prayer led. We are a Holy Spirit dependent church. You know, this is one of the best, best compliments and testimonies I've ever received <clears throat> is when uh, Ron Phillips stepped in the first time. I showed him the church, showed him around. And as soon as he walked in here, he said, I feel you all pray for the Holy Spirit to move here. And I said, we gather every week 
And that's what we pray for. We gather all the time in this place and we pray the Holy Spirit move. He said he fills that. See, church, this is a church that we're dependent on the moving of the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit in our life to live a spirit-filled life. We need to walk in the spirit so we don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. And so we need to be prayer dependent, Holy Spirit dependent. Because when you walk in the spirit, the Bible says that he gives you dynamic, dynamite, dunamis power when the Holy Spirit has come on you and you become a witness for him. And you are explosion. You are an explosion for people to see. And when people People are set on fire. Well, it's like when th- where there's a fire, it attracts people to see what's on fire. And God says, I'm going to make you a powerful fire so that you can show the world your witness and testimony that you've been changed. And it all happens by being directed and living a Holy Spirit dependent prayer life. Our next one is that we're family focused. And you know, we have so many prophecies about the Lord moving. And if we want to be a perpetual church, we need to be a family focused church. The devil from the beginning of times tried to destroy families and break up families. But our focus here is to show the love of God to all families, to men and women and to children of all ages and backgrounds. God places the central theme is the family in scripture. We are the bride of Christ. It is so important for us to understand the focus that's on family. And the reason families uh, tore apart so much is because the enemy seeks to destroy what God has blessed and instituted. And so we understand that we are focused on understanding that we help individuals and families of all generation build healthy and biblical relationships together. You know, there's, there's a reason uh, that we, uh, we have to put a focus on this. And the reason is because God wants us to be strong. And when we are strong, we're able to do more for the kingdom of God. And we need a strong focus. And we try to live that way, being focused on family. The next uh, value is that we're an intercultural congregation. You know, I love the fact that we have different nationalities in this church. I love the fact that we have Peruvians and I pray and visit Brother Pete and uh, Sister Elena and we have our family. I love that we have black people and white people together. We need more of all generations in this church. It's the way we grow our church. When we want to say, I want to be racist and prejudiced to a certain degree or level, it stops the blessing of God. And so the open hand that God has over you stops when prejudice shows up. And so, so that's one of the things when uh, our friend Germain and Lisa came earlier in the year, that's what he, we were talking about. And that's what we said to Germain. We were sitting there eating and we were like, we don't have uh, any prejudice in our heart for any, anything. You know, uh, uh, we're talking about that. And Germain just stopped and he says, Pastor, what are you talking about? Of course I know you don't have prejudice in your heart. Look at all these kids sitting around this table. You know, we've adopted, Darius have adopted, we've adopted the Brunsons, our, uh, uh, you know, interracial couple. We understand that God loves people and he loves all people And that's what we do. We love people. And we have to understand that when it comes to church, all people are available to come to be born again. All people need to be saved. And that's what Galatians says. There's not Jew nor Greek nor bond nor free nor male or female. God sees people. He loves people. He wants us to love people and share the gospel with people. So we need to be people of character We need to be an intercultural congregation. We need to be a character building congregation because character counts. You know, one of the things that I've learned in my life is that when I feel the prompting of the Lord to speak, I speak. But I don't just randomly go around and consistently tell you, God's speaking this, God says this, God does that. Because sometimes it's me thanking it. And I'm thankful that I don't always say that. Because where I'm wrong, uh, it was my thanking, maybe not the impression that God wanted me to share. I'm thankful I didn't say it because I hold a high value on my integrity and my character. And I know you, I know you all 
all appreciate that and you all do the same thing. But we have to understand our character matters. Our integrity matters to the Lord. And what we do is we have to commit ourselves to growing daily in the Lord. He tells us to grow in faith and to grow in virtue knowledge. And so we have to understand that we have to be people that say, I care about my character. I care about how I treat others. I care about how I treat my brothers and sisters. I care about how people are treated in this church. We got to see these things happen. And as it becomes ingrained in you, uh, we understand that God can begin to work through us because, you know, life is a journey. And so we're saying, Lord, today I have a seed of character deposited in me. Help me to grow it for the Lord Jesus Christ. So help us to work on building character. And the next one is that we're compassion filled. You know, there are so many hurting people in this world and God compels us to help meet people's needs physically, emotionally, spiritually. He talks to us in Isaiah 58 about, uh, about let's go to the next slide there, Sister Linda. I appreciate Sister Linda filling in and helping us out. Verse seven, it says, is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, to bring the poor that are cast out in thy house, when thou see the nakedest, that thou cover him, that they hide not thyself from thy own flesh. Break forth light as the morning, let thy health spring forth speedily, and the righteousness go before thee, that the glory of the Lord be thy reward. So we're going to be compassion-filled people, love-filled people. When we put the Lord first, when we put love in our life and our heart, and we allow love to be the central focus in our life. See, the scripture tells us, let love be your go-to garment. There are put on love, the Bible says. So when we put on love, we're operating in God because God is love. And so when we put on, everybody has their favorite go-to garment. Uh, you have your go-to garments when you're taking your days off. You have your go-to garments for work. You got go-to garments. But the Lord says in your life, in your spiritual walk, in your daily growth, go-to garment is love. And when you love, everything flows from you differently. And so make sure you put on love and walk in love. Let's go to the next one, sister. And then finally, outreach oriented. This is the commission that the Lord has given to us. And this is one of the, this is one of the great commissions, Matthew 28. Jesus came and spake unto them saying, all power is given to me in heaven and in earth. So go therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe the all things whatsoever I commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world, the age, amen. So, you know, today it's very important for us to be outreach oriented. We have missions that we support. We have local missions. And a couple years ago, that's when I first started talking to Jeanette. And I said, Jeanette, I need to know, do you, do you have a classroom of people that need help there? And we started talking to her about doing the GT Kids mission. And then when Jonathan and Casey moved back, they, they wanted to start talking about Project A10. And we've got so many different outreach ideas around here that are going forth that all bring glory to God. And it all is for us to be able to understand that our core values of what makes a church a church is that our focus is on just not social issue. Our main focus is the social issue that people around us are dying and going to hell. And you are the voice in the wilderness saying, prepare ye the way of the Lord and make his path ready and straight. He's coming again. And so this year going into 2020, there's open palms over you. God's forgiveness and deliverance and redemptive power is at work in your life. And we're going to believe open heavens over you in 2020. God's got your plans of your life rolled up in him. And he says what you've been praying for, what you've been seeking, we're going to trust it's going to come to fruition. But he says, let these words just pierce your heart. Scripture for every one of these values that I place on here. Let these values become your values. They're biblical values. And as we begin to operate this way, we're going to see kids ministry grow. We're going to see youth ministry expand. We're going to see a church ministry expand. We're going to see, we're going to see better in every area because God's blessing, because he's got an open hand over us. And so let's not be like the one that saw the bounty and he kept it in his tent and he said, look at the bounty that I'm keeping. 
He held it back. And Achan held back bounty that was dedicated to the Lord. And he stopped up the blessing of God from flowing over Israel. And they went to go from Jericho to Ai. And what happened, they experienced the defeat because Achan was holding on to what God says. I've got an open heaven over you. I've got open palms over you. Don't you know the Bible says in the prophets that the gold is mine and the silver's in mine. He says, if I want you to have something to put to your work and to do distribute it your way. Don't you know provision will come? And so we trust the Lord today this way, that it's coming because we've got open hearts to say, God, I'm not holding on to this, but Lord, I'm releasing it because part of, part of open palms in, in the redemptive work of Christ and God in 2020 is that God's got open palms over you. Your life and plans are in his hands, but we've got open palms up to God saying, Lord, I surrender to your will. I surrender to your work. Lord, what do you want me to do? Lord, where do you want me to go? How do you want me to live? How do you want me to be? What do you want me involved in? I'll go, Lord. Here am I. Send me. Just like Isaiah said that. Here am I. Send me. Open palms from earth to heaven is saying, God, here am I. Send me. And so this morning I'm closing. If we can all have a, some musicians make their way back up here, I'm going to ask you to stand with me and we're going to close together this morning praying that prayer. Open palms up to God, saying, Lord, you've got open hands over us. And God, I've got open hands and surrender up to you. Open hands and surrender to you. You work and you move and you minister. You do what only you can do, and we're going to trust you, Lord. It's greater than anything I could do in this world. So with every head bowed and every eyes closed, would you lift your hands with me as a sign of open hands up to the Lord today and say, Lord, here we are. Use me for your glory. Lord, forgive us for where we fell. But God, you got your plans in your hands for my life. And so, God, I thank you. That where I am is not my final, but God, you've got me working. You've got a plan. You've got a perfect plan. And God, you're bringing it to fruition in the name of Jesus. Waiting time is coming to an end and blessing time walking into the, into the blessing is coming. We're moving towards that in Jesus' name. The prophecy that is being spoken out, you're confirming it. Signs and wonders, miracles and breakthroughs. I thank you, Lord, that Lord, as we surrender to you in this place today, Lord, you're blessing us. So this morning, Lord, I thank you for all that you've done and all that you're doing. In the name of Jesus. We hear this word today. It's a confirmation. You know, as I pray each night, we pray as a family. And one of the things I specifically pray for is God open doors of opportunity for us to walk through. So Lord, we pray that way today as a body. I pray for my family. And I mean for my family and for my church when I say it. But I'm praying specifically in this church today Lord, we hear your word, and God, I pray you open these doors of opportunity. 
open these doors of finances, these doors of health, these doors of restoration, these doors of opportunity that you've got provided. You hold the royal keys of David in heaven, Jesus, and you're going to unlock over us with those open hands from the Father. Healings and miracles and breakthrough. We believe it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I'm going to ask you one thing to do before we go today, and I want you just to do search with all your heart. I want them to sing a song here, whatever they've got playing, and I just want you to either to just lift your hands with me one more time and say, Lord, open doors of opportunity for us. Help me to walk through those doors when you open them, and let's just pray that way together this morning. Father, I thank you for open doors of opportunity that's coming, that you're opening for us. Lord, we thank you that we're walking through them this year. I thank you, Lord, that you are providing. Thank you, Lord, we're going to see it happen in Jesus' name. And we declare together in this place the word that says the devil is a liar and we're not giving him place to get a stronghold or a foothold in our life today. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for blessing this church. Thank you for the opportunities you provide in this church. Church. Thank you, Lord, that every need is met in this church. Thank you, Father, that you've opened these doors of heaven over us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to pray for people. If you need special prayer, if you want to be anointed this morning before we leave, I want to pray for you today. And so as they sing this song, I want you to come forward. We'll anoint and pray for you. Otherwise, you're dismissed. Have a wonderful day. Uh, Pastor Anthony, uh, uh, Audrey, you can go out there and sign up for this uh, this community um, event team that we have here. And uh, and if you need some prayer, I want you to come this morning. We're going to pray for you. Sing it one time through as we. You are my.